Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Tech Cafeteria. This is kind of a special one. We've got balloons because this is the one-year anniversary uh, of, the, of the first uh, Tech Cafeteria. So uh, we've done, this is like our 13th one. So thank you for coming out and supporting us. Um, you can clap. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, so we're hopefully going to keep keep on doing these. So um, you know, if there's if there's anything that you really want to hear about, if you have a cool idea for a talk, uh, let us know, and we'll, we'll get you on the schedule. Um, uh, so today uh, is really cool. We've got Brandon Crawley, uh, Chief Data Officer for the Cincinnati City of Cincinnati. He's going to talk about open data and all things data for the city. Um, so just one note, when you're done with your, uh, with your food, if you just want to leave the trays where they are, don't worry about bringing them anywhere. We'll come and clean them up at the end. So without further ado, Brandon. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay, okay, okay. I will say this. Um, I am not extra special that I am here on this one-year anniversary. To be honest with you, it was the luck of the draw. I picked an earlier date. It was taken before me, so I'm here. But I am still excited to be here. Um, I will say this also. I didn't know that environments like this existed in, city, in, in Cincinnati. I'm no, I, I normally see places like this either on television or if I go to a Code for America summit in Oakland or something. So this is really neat. And I envy you all if you can wear jeans to work and it doesn't have to be like Jean Friday or there's no type of campaign that we're doing to build some type of uh, fund or something. So it's pretty cool. So without further ado, I know you all pretty much know what open data is. It's uh, in a municipal organizational context, it is just making government, uh, government data available in a machine readable format. But there are some benefits to open data. It improves transparency internally and externally. It builds public trust. It strengthens public engagement. It reduces operating costs. It supports data-driven decision-making and promotes economic activity. Uh, what is the city's commitment to open data? Uh, a couple of years ago, the then city manager at the time, that would have been Scott Stiles, he basically initiated this admin reg. And an admin reg in the city of Cincinnati is like an executive order. It simply means that it is official that we are going to move forward with some initiative. And that initiative for admin reg 61 was open data. And what it does is that it lays out how we're going to make data more available to the public. But it also was a formal directive to departments so that they didn't really have an option to share their data. It was that they were going to partner with myself at the time and the technology department to make data available, not only for internal consumption, but we'd also make it available for external consumption. And then it establishes a structure where we have now oversight on our open data initiative. So uh, any data set that we release, we have a management oversight committee where we can go through, identify the data that we're wanting to release, and then obviously publish that out to the portal. There are some practical benefits of open data outside of accountability and transparency. And one of those benefits is innovation. Um, there are a variety of things across the country that have been developed by data made available through a public portal. Uh, one of the things that I just learned uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jonathan Pickard, anybody familiar with him? Over at Data Seed, I, I went to Centrifuge, which is another sweet building, I, I must say, here in Cincinnati. And I saw that he basically used Cincinnati crime data to build out a Cincinnati analytics platform that he's planning to build out. But he's using City of Cincinnati data that's been made public on their portal to build out this platform. And he's using other data sets, obviously, but I was glad to know that he was using data that we have published out through our open data portal. Um, also, commercial application use. How many of you all are familiar with Matt Linehan and Hirewheel? And he's using our building permit data from 
our open data portal and he's built out an application that helps individuals find out contractors to do some honeydews around the house that they may not have time to do. So there's a lot of different ways that this data can be used. Uh, also, open data helps uh, help enhance services. Uh, I was just talking with Ed with Foxtrot and I shared with him that in the city of Austin, Texas, there was a guy who used open data to build an application called Aunt Bertha. And that application simply was developed to help people find social services that are available in that area. So it's exciting to be here in Cincinnati and to have this portal and make this data available for you. But I'm also excited to see what types of things that you all can do with this data. Um, there's, there's not much more I have to this presentation. I would like to really open up the floor and just answer any questions that you all may have. So I'm sorry for the brevity of this particular presentation, but I'm really here to hear what you guys got to say and see if I can be of help to you. Yes, sir. Oh, so I'm sorry, and I took for granted that a majority of you all were familiar with our portal. The portal is data.cincinnati-oh.gov. So that's the Socrata portal that we have where you can go and take out a host of, of data sets that we've made public. Uh, one of the most um, highly sought after data sets on our site is the vendor uh, uh, bids and services uh, data set that we have out there. It's a portal where you can go out there and check for bids that have been made available uh, by the city of Cincinnati. So before, uh, you would call the purchasing department and they would give you a bid pack, if you will, and that's basically a packet that had a bunch of information that would be available to bid on a particular contract or a job. But now that data is out there on our portal. So I. I appreciate that question. I, I took for granted you guys were aware of the portal. Any other questions? Please let there be more questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, how is the data from different agencies harvested, processed, and then put up to a platform? Okay, so, so good question. Um, the city of Cincinnati, I would say, is no different than a lot of organizations across the country. A lot of the organizations have a bunch of different silos, right? And through the Office of Performance and Data Analytics, we've been working to identify operational uh, efficiencies that we can improve on. And as we've identified those systems in the data systems where that data resides, um, I've built utilities that would go out, connect to those department data sets, and then mine that data into a central repository or a data warehouse. So that's where I, that's really the role that I fulfill. I'm working with the Office of Performance and Data Analytics to help get this data from the data system, the source systems into our database. Um, did you want to know the technical way that I'm doing that or just, okay. So um, first and foremost, we have to get access to the data, that's obvious. Um, and with the city manager's support, we certainly now have really the key, if you will, to connecting with the departments and partnering with them so that we can get access to their data. So we work to get read-only access to their data. And then what I'm using is a tool called uh, FME Desktop. It's made by SAFE. It's basically an ETL tool. It's a pretty good tool. Um, and for, so, so, so I connect to those source systems and then basically we identify what tables or views that we need that data out of and then we mine it into our Oracle database. Also that same tool uh, helps to take the data from our data warehouse for any data sets that we have published out on our, our uh, open data portal and I automate the delivery of that data. So there's, out of the 25 to 30 data sets that we have out there, we have right now 10 of them that's automated with that data. So FME Desktop is the tool that I'm using. It's a pretty good, I'm not a salesman, 
by any means. I'm sure there's other products out there, so don't say that Brandon Crowley from the city of Cincinnati is promoting this product. I just use that one. Yes. Okay, thank you, that's a good question. So uh, I actually uh, have been with the city for 16 years. And my primary responsibility when I came into the city was that I actually helped build the uh, income tax system that we collect taxes for. So my primary, don't, don't shoot me. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 I didn't actually build it from scratch. It was a transfer system, but we've taken it from its infant stage to where it is now. Uh, so the aggressive nature by which we uh, collect taxes, that's me. So now, yeah, you can't shoot me. Um, so I was solely brought in to take care of that system, to do all the programming and the back end development and the front end development for it. And then over time, I, I just, you know, I think I was pretty good at my job and I, got promotions and I uh, moved to where we are now. And now I, we, I am the city's first chief data officer. I would tell you that I am not the most techie tech in the world. Uh, I'm sure there are other people out there that are smarter than I am that have the role of a chief data officer. But what I do have is a, a love for being a public servant and an understanding of what is required to get the data from our source systems to our repository so that I can be a good help to the Office of Performance and Data Analytics so that they can do their job. So it is first of its kind, so I'm excited to be the first selected Chief Data Officer, and hopefully I am the Chief Data Officer until I retire. <laughs> uh, so if you're listening recording, I would like that to be known as well. <laughs> Does that help, Michelle? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question about, so I, I was looking because I can't find the web portal. Mm -hmm. I apologize for not being there sooner. Hey. But uh, so you're offering it, and I can see that you're, you're definitely in your mission statement talking about how you're going to be one for public as well as businesses. Mm -hmm. And you're offering these data sets. Are you also offering um, a way for them to visualize these data sets, uh, interpret them maybe for people who are not big data users or, you know, Right. So what's the, what's the, so we aren't building a lot of visualizations ourselves and publishing them, but actually the public has built a lot of visualizations. So there's some filtering that you can do and you can build some pie charts and all that good stuff out there, but we ourselves have not built a lot of visualizations for the public. Are you offering a chance for the public to, the, to contribute to this open portal? Oh yeah, you, you're, any, anybody can go out there and build a visualization with the data there if you're asking Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm sure that's something that we wouldn't mind, you know, investigating, obviously. So, but for the most part, the visualizations that have been, you know, asked for, people have been doing them themselves out there, or they've been using Tableau Public, if you will, and building out their own data, you know, visualizations from the data that we're publishing. So, yeah, but that's something certainly we can talk about. Yes, sir. You look like you had a question. Yes. So for the most part, um, I am responsible for getting the data and then obviously uh, working with the departments to vet through the data and then obviously checking it for if information needs to be redacted and all that good stuff and then publishing it. So out of the Office of Performance and Data Analytics, there's the Chief Performance Officer, his name is Chad Kinney, and then there's two other business analysts in there. Uh, and then I work in concert with those individuals. But as it relates to the process to go about releasing a data set, we work with the department. We obviously vet the data set with the law department. And once we got all the check marks checked on our list, then we publish it out there. So one of the other things that we are engaged with, the White House 
has a police data initiative program and the city of Cincinnati is a member of that. And um, so the calls for service data set, I don't know who's familiar with the calls of service data set we just published a couple of weeks ago. That's one that we just released, but that is a byproduct of our partnership with the federal government and the police data initiative to put these data sets out there. So we have police crime incident data that's out there. We have calls for service. We have use of force that's coming and officers involved shootings that's also coming. And all of that is birthed from that particular data initiative. So it's partnerships like that that even actually help us frame what we're actually producing out there publicly. Yes, ma'am. Have you guys given any thought to what the next data set would be? Because I know it's a very time intensive process, like trying to figure out what the public wants, what you guys feel would be relevant to release. Have you thought through, and then you just released the release class? Right, so the next couple of ones that I'm, in, um, I'm working to implement would be the ones that I just mentioned for the police data initiative, use of force, and officer involved shooting. So those two are the next ones on on our uh, list to pu uh, publish. However, um, that's one of the things that I'm here for. I'd love to hear if there's any interest of data that you all might be interested in that will help um, push us to put that data out there. Uh, but given the fact that, I'll, I'll get you in a second, given the fact that, um, you know, we, we have an interest of what we're publishing because as we are making the data really um, internally transparent, we then see the value of making that data publicly transparent. But there might be some data sets that you all may have some interest in that we're not even thinking of yet. So I would love to have that kind of information from you all. And that's really one of the reasons why I'm here. So I think you had your hand up first. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask if there's a particular data set that, that you're really proud of, you're, you know, that's your favorite sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> So all of the ones that I have automated are the ones that I'm most proud of. <laughs> uh, and and um, so I, I will say this, I am proud of our program. Um, April 22nd of last year was the year that we launched, so we just celebrated our one year anniversary in April. And while we don't have a robust number of data sets that would mirror your New York's or your Chicago's or you know Boston. I feel like the data that we're publishing is value. It's got a great value to it because some of the some of the data. I will say this: the data that we're publishing out there, there's it's it's immense. It's a lot of details to that data, and when you look at a calls for service from another municipality and you look for a calls for service from our municipality you see that we're providing more elements in that data set than perhaps other cities are. So while we may not be the big fish out there, I certainly believe that we're Nemo. We're very, you know, we're very diligent and, and strong in our approach on how we're going about doing this. Um, so yeah, the ones I automate basically are the ones I'm most proud of. But I will say this, I did not know that our, um, the purchasing department's data set with the vendor contracts and those bids, I did not know that it was going to be as popular as it is. And we just released that back in October, I think it was, of last year. And now it's got over 20,000 views. And for Cincinnati and, and that data set, in my mind, I would not have thought that it would have been that big, but that's big. So Patrick Duhaney, who's the purchasing officer, he would be proud of that one, but I'm proud of the ones that we automate. Yes, sir. Um, I was curious, you had mentioned being curious about other data sets that people would, would want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm actually more broadly curious if you have any ability to work with the county as well, because um, a data set I would love to see in a queryable format is the auditors, the, par the parcel data. I know okay. you said permit data, but Dusty has all of the parcel data and the history for yeah, I, so, know if that was like, I know that's not your data, but I was curious like, if you have any ability to work with the county. Uh, that's not something that we have. Um, it's not something that actually crossed my mind. The one thing that 
did cross my mind from the county was the uh, scrap metal do not buy list. Are you guys familiar with that one? No. Um, it used to be, so prior to the city of Cincinnati re, basically relaunching our open data portal, there was a do not buy scrap metal listing that was provided from the county that we published on the portal that the Hale Foundation um, had for us, which was a great portal at the time. And I would love to get that data set back out to our portal. One of the challenges was, or rather is, is that it comes in a Excel spreadsheet and then, you know, to, to up, here's the big thing. In open data, the success of your program is really on the automation of the data. Would you all agree? So if it's not up to date, why use it? So the only way for it to be up to date is if I was staffed with a bunch of people who could, you know, check their emails and manually update all of these data sets, which I don't have. But if that data set was one that I would want to be, you know, work with the county to basically get and automate, that's the first one that I was thinking about. But certainly I'd love to get some information from you as to specifically what you would want. And as you comment, as you refer to Dusty, I don't, I mean, we could work with Dusty to see if he'll give it to us, but. Well, they, they have, if you request it from them, they'll, they'll give you access for a period of time. But they don't have any automated tools. Okay, okay, okay. So you want me to take that challenge and work that out for you. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk afterwards, okay? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular format that you have noticed people access more of or request to download more of? Um, not really. I think a lot of people who use the data use the API mm -hmm. and, and just basically consume it that way. Okay. Um, but for the most part, there has. Uh, I know you can get it in a CSV, Excel, um, and obviously it's just a text. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the ones that I've you know, prominently seen used. So, yes, sir. Uh, kind of along uh, these lines, as, as far as like working with other either counties or, or other municipalities. It's a hard um, word to say. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned that you go to other cities and stuff like that, and you, you see slightly different um, in terms of the elements that are. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that's a great question. Um, I will say this, that with the White House Police Data Initiative, that was the whole intent of that particular collection of municipalities, to come up with certain data sets that we're gonna publish and then common data elements so that they, you know, every city would have the same types of data elements because there would be value in your analysis of common data elements, obviously, right? Uh, there isn't anything outside of that that I'm aware of. There are a number of different, um, so the Code for America, which I go to, uh, I've gone to for the last couple of years, they have basically, there's a small community of people there that, you know, talk, obviously, we all talk, and talk about what types of data we're putting out there, and we try to mimic what other cities are doing, but there is nothing that I'm aware of that, you know, kind of collaboratively takes all of these municipalities and, and does that, but. That's kind of the point of the federal government, right? Right. 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 Because you, you mentioned the idea of commercialization. It's great for just Cincinnati, but then you, you have the, the challenge every time you move to a different city. You've got to work on that with that information. And I know that's, that's what you're saying. Right. Right. 
Yeah, I think for the most part what has happened is that, you know, the people who've, out, who've jumped out there first, their programs are looked at as, you know, the flagship programs for open data, if you will. And then from there, people are watching how they've implemented their portals and how they released certain data sets and they're using them as a template. So like I said, Chicago and New York and San Francisco has a great uh, data portal that, that is awesome and they have a great program in place. So those are the people that I'm talking to when I go to summits like that to find out how to do what, they, you know, what they've done. I actually visited the city of Chicago before we launched our portal and, and met, I didn't meet with Jonathan, I mean, um, Tom Schneck directly, but I worked with one of his persons that, you know, works under him and what they're doing out there was great. And, and he's a big data guy. And, and I don't know, is anybody familiar with Tom Schneck? Okay, um, you can look him up. Uh, he's an interesting cat to follow. Uh, he has a lot of different ideas. Uh, with regards to data. So those are the types of things that happen, but that's a good idea that you had. And um, I'll look into that as we kind of go to the Code for America Summit this year. Yes, sir. Yeah, Brandon, you mentioned earlier about, you know, the open data and the Socrata portal, mm -hmm. making some startups possible. You mentioned Fire Wheel, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So they're able to achieve their goals because of access to open data. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think one of the things, so at this particular moment, I think we are looking for you all to kind of share with us what your data needs are so that we can help you all do exactly what you want to do. And that is build some fantastic apps up until this point, And, you know, we've kind of solicited this. What exactly is not out there that you all would need to build something from? And I've had questions or at least requests to add certain data elements like to our crime data or our calls for service. But there's not, there's not been many requests on a particular data set. So I, if I was smart enough to code something in whatever the language, I'm using a very archaic, no, I won't say that. I am using. Um, a language that is pretty, for the tax system, I'm not doing something that I feel like I don't know JavaScript and all that good stuff, and I don't know R, and I don't know any of that. But if I did, I would look at that data that's out there and see what need do I have from this data that's out there. Like you have the food and safety program data. So we basically put all of that data out there, and if I was someone that could code it, I would code something that perhaps would tell me, you know, out of all of the data in here, which one had had, you know, more than one called inspection request. Maybe that might be something that, you know, a restaurant I might avoid or, you know, I don't know. But, you know, you want to find out obviously why. So those types of things, I'm looking for you all to develop and let me know, like, if there's data out there that's, I mean, if there's no data out there that would help your need, tell us what you need, and we would try to get to th that data out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to see the parking meter data. The parking meter data? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of it now, so I should be able to find an open parking meter. Okay. Um, that's not a bad idea. Um, Um, I, I, I will answer in this manner. I don't know enough right now about that. So uh, I can't answer definitively whether or not. It's whomever we're with, obviously, it's our data. So I, I imagine that obviously going through the, the process to get it, we can get it. So I wrote that down. And I wrote Dusty to get data from Dusty. <laughs> Yes, sir. I mean, you know, I'm pretty ignorant about all of the 
different departments that would potentially have data sets that I might be interested in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have no idea, like, you know, if, you know, well, actually, how many departments there are that have their own, all the little silos. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I don't know if there's a list or anything of, of departments that are potential silos that could be, you know, <laughs> Tapped. There you go. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome to have. Did you say tapped or attacked? <laughs> <laughs> tapped, tapped, tapped. I just want to make sure it was <laughs> tapped. Okay, so let's. I'm going to. So we have over 17 departments. So you have. I was going to. Michelle, I'm not in your business. Believe me, I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm just. You have a. <laughs> you got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Um, And then I'm not being in your business on your history either. <laughs> so when you, so this is just kind of to help us, right? Okay. Just for context. So these are some of the departments obviously that we have and Say, for instance, we do have vendor payment information out there. So, um, and, and soon we will uh, be working to make that data available on HiocheckBook.gov. Um, uh, but here's all of the different departments. So I don't know if looking at this list, does this make sense as to perhaps what, what information uh, we could put out there. We've tried our best to at least put data from each of the departments by the time of the launch and then obviously we're growing uh, in that. Um, Are those just links to the... They're departmental websites. It's not <coughs> links to data on our portal because not all of the departments have data out there. Um, we do publish uh, calls for, I mean, sorry, uh, non-emergency 311 data. So you can check how many potholes have been repaired or you can check that kind of stuff. Um, human resources, we launched some information to let you all know what employees get paid in the city of Cincinnati. That was always highly requested. Um, the Office of Performance of Data Analytics. This is one of the this is one data set that you guys might actually find a lot of value in. Which, Okay, so right now this looks like just nothing really valuable, right? This doesn't look like much. But each Cincy stat meeting that we have, so we have one for police, we have one for fire, we have one for public services, we have one for inclusion, which is um, uh, any of our inclusion efforts for small businesses and minority businesses. Each stat has the measures that have been, tr that we're tracking for each of the department. It has a PDF of the PowerPoints, but it also has meeting summaries. So out of these, if you're interested in taking a look at this, you can find potential questions, I mean, you know, uh, issues that could be answered with data. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can find from here, you know, what's going on with the police department. And, you know, all of this stuff is publicly available to you all. And it shows you, oh, this, was this, oh, that said police, but that was, no, I think I selected this one, didn't I? Nope. I got to fix that. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah, we got to fix that. But I'll just pop back over here. But 
you can see some of the measures that we're checking and you know what the intent of the memo and the meeting summary is and then from there you can find potential projects if you will so this is just one of the ways that you guys can use the data now this obviously is not in a machine readable format and you can't do anything with it but it gives you a good idea of what we're talking about out of the office of performance and data analytics and then what types of things we're looking to to resolve because we have our goals that the city manager has defined and we have our priorities and those are the ones that we're working to obviously um, partner with the city manager's office to resolve but these are types of things that you guys can take a look at as well and and have those questions hey Brandon you know I see this can we put a data set out here for this particular inst you know for this particular purpose does that make sense okay this was a kind of like off the beaten path of our my presentation but hey and don't judge me for this one entry being wrong. I got to fix that when I get back to the office. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I got a couple of them. Um, one is on the uh, on the site you just showed us when you search for that particular data set. I was seeing that you have like data sets and you have filtered views. Right. So what's the difference in that in terms of how you're putting those out? So actually. I have no control of the filter views. That's the public actually building out those filtered views. So they're looking at the data, and this might be something that they've built based on what they're interested in. And if it's a data set that gets automated, it, you know, they can commonly go back to it. But if you want to take a look at one, I can. But we've not, as, as what's your name? Sarah. Sarah. As Sarah asked earlier, do we build out any of those visualizations or the filter views? And we don't. The public builds it and you know it's there for you all to consume and however you want to process it this might be disturbing for folks so let me <laughs> let me open back up the presentation on the question side is there anything else yes sir So that, that's a very good question. Data quality is something that we are most interested in. Uh, and I will say this, one of my responsibilities is in this enterprise approach for data management, we're looking to improve integrity, quality, and all of that good stuff. So as we find instances in data through our analysis, through the Office of Performance and Data Analytics, we are working to improve the quality of that data. Uh, but specifically with like, if, if that instance with geocoding or anything like that, what, what we're, we have, are you all familiar with CAGES here in the city of Cincinnati and their data that they're publishing? So we have an award-winning GIS um, uh, department and when it comes to addresses for the city of Cincinnati and any of the addresses for services that we provide to the city of Cincinnati, that data is filtered through our GIS system. So the goal is, is that any data that we're publishing publicly, obviously, would have been vetted through our GIS system and it is accurate. But outside of those types of things, you know, data quality issues are data quality issues. So when we notice them and when we find front end system, you know, front end applications or the front end to an application that causes a data quality issue yes we've worked to try to fix those problems does that answer your question and are the different departments receptive to input from third departments yes they have to be <laughs> and and i'm saying I, I said that in jest but yes that was that's that's the whole reason why we are aligned with the city managers department so that we can help facilitate that agenda. The agenda is making better, smarter decisions with data. And when we are representing the city manager's office, departments are prone to partner with us. They're encouraged to do so. I said that as PC as I could. Yes, sir. 
Um, so um, I am, I got my business cards, obviously, and then my uh, email address is out there actually on the open data portal. And then uh, you can find me on Twitter. I don't tweet that much. I think it's B.E. Crowley 10, I think. Yeah, I think it is. They asked me for it. Michelle, isn't it something? OK, that's terrible. I don't know it. I think it's B.E. Crowley 10. Don't judge me. I'm. Yeah. My email address, I'll give you guys that one. I know that one. It's Brandon.Crowley at Cincinnati-OH.gov. But it is B.E. Crowley 10. My Twitter is B.E. Crowley 10. I obviously don't tweet that much, but I'm growing in my tweet dumb. Can I ask a question? Have you all talked to someone as long as you all have talked to me? Because I feel attacked. I'm just kidding. I don't feel attacked. <laughs> But I feel like I've been standing up here for a while. This is good. Four more, huh? Four minutes to one, so you have four more minutes. Oh, okay. So, some, so someone has stood up here and talked till one o'clock. Yeah? Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to grab my chair. I'm just kidding. No, so what else? Do we have any other questions? Has this been helpful? Yeah. Okay, okay. I want to make sure that is. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a city group. I, I can't speak, you know, a, a lot about cages. That is a department that is not obviously under uh, my umbrella. But uh, Raj Shundor, who is the cages administrator, he's phenomenal. So uh, they are always open to facilitating questions that you all have. Yes, sir. No, I haven't had any issues like that reported to my knowledge. Um, and you know what, to be perfectly honest with you, when you put data out there for public consumption, it is always up to interpretation. Um, and I think that's the beautiful thing about transparency is that the data that's out there, it's out there. And we provide the data dictionary, um, but how one terp interprets the data based on what we're publishing, you know, is completely up to that, that person. I will say this, uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is that we published a data dictionary, you know, data set. And that's not one that you see a lot of out in the open data uh, portal arena. So that's another one I'm proud of. There you go, another one. How long does it take you to get a data set out there? I know it's different for every situation, <laughs> but I mean, on average, what kind of? Uh, so depending on the sensitivity of the data, obviously, it and and whether or not it's one that we've obviously already have in our data warehouse, I would say it may take no more than three, three to four weeks. Just going through, you know, law for evaluation of the data set and then making sure the department is comfortable with the data elements that we're and they may want to add more, they may want to take out uh, certain data elements, what have you what have you. Um, because it may not just be applicable. Um, but I would say no, no more than that, three to four weeks. The cost for service one was a little more sensitive uh, because we had to anonymize some of the information out of that one, uh, like the put the beginning and the ending block information. Um, so that one was one that took a little more time, uh, but we built that into the use of force and the officers involved shooting. So uh, that won't take as long as these other, the other one did. Yes, sir. One other question. Is there some way to find some of these uh, consumer finished pieces that people have created from the data set you put out there? I mean, is that something that there's a hmm. place where you can go and say, hey, check out what these people 
people have done with our data? Um, there is nothing that we've actually published. And I'm only aware of those things that obviously, you know, are brought to my attention. Um, but that's a good thought, actually. I mean, it kind of highlights this is what you can do with this. Look at the great results you're getting and try it out yourself kind of thing versus here's a data set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. If you'd like to see some, I have some maps here today for people that have built stuff in the bottom of the city. It's, uh, we have some crime maps and some stuff like that. Okay. Cool. Oh, good.